I'm sure you've heard the saying, it's not rocket science, when, when people want to suggest something isn't very hard. This means that everyone knows developing and launching a rocket is one of the most challenging things humanity has achieved. But what many don't realize is that landing a rocket is the most difficult part of rocket science. This is why many old rockets didn't even attempt to land a rocket, let alone reuse them for another flight. In the early days of space exploration, rockets were designed for single use. After delivering their payload, they would fall back to Earth and be destroyed upon re-entry, or splash down in the ocean. For example, the Saturn V rocket, which powered the Apollo missions to the moon, was an expendable launch vehicle. Each of its three stages were discarded after use. The first stage, which provided the initial thrust to escape the Earth's gravity, would fall into the Atlantic Ocean. The second and third stages were either left in orbit or also ended up in the ocean. These practices were standard because the technology to safely land and reuse rockets didn't exist. It wasn't until recent years that reusable rocket technology began to take shape, primarily driven by SpaceX. They started making waves with their Falcon 9 rockets. It began in 2015, when SpaceX managed to land a Falcon 9 booster for the first time after launching 11 satellites. This was a game-changer because it proved that rockets could be used more than once, cutting down the cost of space travel. The process of recovering these boosters involves several methods. For Falcon 9, the booster separates from the second stage after launch, then uses grid fins for steering, and reignites its engines to slow down, eventually landing on a drone ship at sea or back on land. Since that first successful landing, SpaceX has been improving their technique. As of 2024, they've managed to recover over 200 Falcon 9 boosters. Some of these boosters have been reused up to 20 times, which is a huge achievement. For instance, they recently set a record with a Falcon 9 booster completing its 20th mission during a Starlink launch. Interestingly, to date, SpaceX has only recovered Falcon 9 boosters using drone ships, not the much larger Starship Super Heavy boosters. The idea of landing a gigantic Super Heavy booster on a drone ship is indeed challenging, but not out of reach for SpaceX. They are currently working on making this a reality. In June, the FAA released a detailed report about SpaceX's plans for Starship at the LC-39A launch site in Florida. This report was a crucial step for SpaceX to obtain an operational license and provided insights into their ambitious future plans, including the super-heavy launch system designed to advance space exploration significantly. The report highlighted impressive details like Starship's 35 engines and separate towers for integrating and catching the rocket. SpaceX now aims to land these rockets on drone ships at sea, similar to what they've done with Falcon 9. This approach is necessary because SpaceX plans to conduct 44 launches a year, needing at least three Starship launches a month. This tight schedule requires quick turnarounds, and landing on a drone ship offers more flexibility and ensures smooth operations, even if there are unexpected issues. However, landing the Super Heavy booster on a drone ship is not going to be as easy as landing the Falcon 9 booster. The Falcon 9's first stage is about 70 meters tall and has a diameter of 3.7 meters. It lands on drone ships like Of Course I Still Love You and Just Read the Instructions, which are approximately 300 feet long and 170 feet wide. These ships are designed to handle the landing of the Falcon 9 booster, which generates around 1.7 million pounds of thrust at sea level. The Starship Super Heavy booster, however, is much larger and more powerful. The Starship Super Heavy booster, however, is much larger and more powerful. It stands at 71 meters tall with a diameter of 9 meters and is powered by 33 Raptor engines, generating 7,590 metric tons of thrust. This significant size and power difference means that SpaceX will need to scale up their drone ships to accommodate the Super Heavy booster. The current drone ships used for Falcon 9 landings would be insufficient for the massive Super Heavy booster. SpaceX would likely need to design and build larger drone ships or significantly modify existing ones to handle the increased size and thrust of the Super Heavy booster. Building such a massive drone ship is indeed possible, and we can look at China's recent achievements for inspiration. 
China successfully launched the Gravity One rocket, the world's most powerful solid-fueled launcher, from a mobile sea platform in the Yellow Sea. Although this task is tough, it is certainly worth it. Currently, the cost of a Falcon 9 launch is about $62 million, and reusing the booster can save up to 30% per launch. Given the much larger payload capacity of the Super Heavy and Starship system, the potential savings could be even greater. If SpaceX can achieve similar reusability with Super Heavy, the estimated cost savings per launch could easily be in the tens of millions of dollars. Typically, Starship is initially supposed to land onshore, caught by the launch tower's chopsticks arms, known as the Mechazilla system. This system consists of large robotic arms attached to the launch tower that catch the descending booster midair, eliminating the need for the booster to perform a complex landing sequence. However, SpaceX now aims to land these rockets on drone ships at sea, similar to what they've done with Falcon 9. This approach is necessary because SpaceX plans to conduct 44 launches a year, needing at least three Starship launches a month. This tight schedule requires quick turnarounds, and landing on a drone ship offers more flexibility and ensures smooth operations even if there are unexpected issues. The Mechazilla system is designed to work with other innovations in the Starship program. Starship itself is a fully reusable spacecraft designed to carry both crew and cargo to a variety of destinations, including Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. So, which method is better? Landing on a drone ship or catching with Mechazilla. Each method has its advantages. Landing on a drone ship has proven effective for the Falcon 9 boosters, allowing for a high degree of reusability and cost savings. It offers flexibility in launch and landing sites and has become a reliable part of SpaceX's operations. However, the Mechazilla system, while promises even greater efficiency, it is risky at least for now, because the Starship system is still relatively new, and the process of catching a booster mid-air is extremely challenging. If things go wrong, there is a chance that the booster could explode and cause significant damage. The area around the launch tower, including the tower itself and surrounding infrastructure, is worth billions of dollars and represents years of hard work. A failed catch could destroy these valuable assets and set back SpaceX's progress significantly. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.